Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller here along with Robert Glasscock, and we are going to talk about one of our three charts. <laughs> really, I think we could add up even more, but let's just say we have three charts. Robert's going to mention what those are here in just a minute. Obviously, one of them is your natal chart, but here is a question about one of the other two. My question is around the sun rising charts. When you place your sun on the ascendant, do you assume zero degrees of that sign or do you use the actual degree of your sun sign? I understand this chart can be helpful when planets change signs. Do they automatically change houses in the sun rising chart? If this is something you and Robert would be interested in discussing, I would love to hear more on the subject. This is such a great question, and I'm glad you asked, because I think it confuses a lot of astrologers. We all have three horoscopes. We have a time-to-birth chart, if you have a time on a birth certificate, or we have what is called a solar chart, which is what you're asking about. It's placing the sun on the ascendant. No, you don't change the, the ascendant to zero degrees or any of that. You simply, in my software, uh, when you set up the natal chart, you can go into settings, houses, and there's an option to place, it says sun on ascendant. So you simply click that and it places the sun on the first cusp. And that's called a solar chart. And we all have one. The third chart that we all have is called the natural wheel, and that starts with zero degrees Aries, and then all of the planets in your birth chart are placed around in that wheel. And all three charts are equally valid. Nothing beats a time birth chart, but you can still glean a ton of information from a solar chart and even the natural wheel. What it does, these three charts, is give you a different perspective on the planets and their archetypes and their meanings and the house placements and so on. So it and the three charts actually enrich each other. As long as you remember, if you can, if you have a timed birth chart, that is the one that takes precedence really over the other two. But still, in a general archetypal sense, the solar chart is wonderfully revealing because it puts the, the life force, the sun, your consciousness, the symbol of your life, the sun, at the first cusp. So what you're looking at in the solar chart is your natal chart viewed through the lens of your sun. You can do the same thing with every single planet in your chart. You can place any planet on the first cusp. And then you're looking at a horoscope that shows the relationships of all the other planets in your chart to that one planet that you've placed on the first cusp. So if you want to, for example, place your Saturn on the first cusp and then look at your natal chart, you begin to see that as far as Saturn is concerned in your, in your chart, here are the relationships of the rest of your planets to Saturn. And it's a fascinating study if you take a little bit of time to look at these three charts. The second part of this, when you asked about when a planet changes signs, I can't remember exactly what, what your question stated, but something about placing zero degrees. Uh, if you're going to look at a planet changing signs, you would set up an ingress chart for that planet. And you have to find the exact date and time that it changes signs, which you can do from the ephemeris. Uh, and then you can set it up for your location, or you can set it up for Greenwich Mean Time in England, or wherever your location want, you want. But that's an ingress chart. So I, I hope that helps clarify some of this. But I'm telling you, it's very rewarding, all of you. If you take the time, just simply set up the solar chart, set up the natural wheel, and then begin to look at those three charts, including your time birth chart, and think about the differences in house placements, house rulerships, and so on. And you'll begin to, to enrich your reading with a lot of subtext from these other two charts. Let's play her just this little section again, because I think this is definitely valid of a point of confusion that we that want to make sure everybody's clear. I understand this chart can be helpful when planets change signs. Okay, now, right there, when you set the sun to the ascendant point, the software does, nothing changes signs. 
but you're sitting there looking at your sun sign at the cusp of your first house. So is that your rising sign? No, it's not your rising sign. You don't have a rising sign unless you have a timed birth chart. If you're using a solar chart by placing the sun at the first cusp, it is not an ascendant. It's not a rising sign. It is the sun's position. It's called a solar chart, which is to remind you that this chart is not a time birth chart and does not have an ascendant. So just because it can get very confusing if you're if you're not clear about that. Yeah. See, because and I'm just I'm looking at one here that is times my own chart. The ascendant is over in another quadrant of the chart. So the ascendant point is placed in a different location. True. And that, too, Thomas, is interpretable in a solar chart. If you have a timed birth chart and you're simply asking the software, place the sun on the ascendant, place the sun on the first cusp, then your actual timed ascendant will show in that solar chart in some other house. And that's interpretable because that ascendant from your time birth chart is the summation of your whole chart. It's like the front door into your house. So if that front door in a solar chart falls in your sixth house, that tells you something, too. Yeah. Mine falls in the eighth. And has my life not been about transformation? Totally. Hello. <laughs> totally. And you're already a Scorpio, you see. So it, it reinforces all of the Scorpionic indicators in your chart because the sun or, or the ascent falls in the eighth now there's another little structural anomaly that i find interesting here so what you're doing is you're putting that natal sun all right let's say that you have a timed chart like i do and you do so you're putting that sun knowing its position its natal position in this first house location now that same degree point goes all the way around at the cusp points of the rest of the houses. So does this, in essence, become the same structure as an equal house chart? It is equal houses. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Here's the other little part of her question. Do they automatically change houses in the sun rising chart? And the answer to that is obviously yes. They are in a different house placement, but they nothing changes signs absolutely correct and it's those different house positions that give you a whole new perspective on your natal chart and you can use transits to them as well now what do you do if you don't have a time of birth and there's no way to rectify your chart solar chart and set it for noon set it for 12 noon set it for 12 noon so that you get the moon's position at noon 12 noon of the uh, location of your birth yes the location of the birth on the birth date yeah but you set it up for noon and it's still the solar chart and once you have the the chart for noon which gives you the moon's position at noon, then you ask your software place the sun at the first cusp and it'll do that and then that's the solar chart i once had a client i think maybe we've mentioned this thomas she was born in vietnam she was one of these unfortunate babies which at the time uh, was prevalent she was basically thrown into the woods to die they did this i have such a child in my own family by marriage her name was nya she was born with spina bifida she was thrown into the woods to die because in those days that was the sign of the devil my cousin rick who was a navy medic and did two tours of vietnam found this child not in the woods but somebody else but he and his wife adopted this baby and raised her and even with spina bifida she got married she had a child they got divorced ultimately but she has her own accounting business in dallas texas and is doing just fine thank you she did not i have another client like that and she told me the same thing not only do i not know my time of birth i don't know my date and I said to her, you're the only client I have ever had that is free of astrology. You will never know your horoscope. The only kind of astrology you can use is orary. See what it means? So it's, and that's never happened before or since, but there are those people. I don't know if this answers yeah, your question. No, yeah, that would come up. It, yeah, that's very interesting. All right. Is there any specific reason? anything specifically 
why you would cast the sun on first, other than just to look at these other structures? The solar chart is simply your life as viewed through the lens of the sun. And that's the life force, unlike any other planet. That's the life force. Without the sun, we don't have a solar system and you don't have a life. (laughs) So that's why that particular placement, the solar chart, is so important. But you can do the same thing with any of the planets in your chart. You can ask your software, place Jupiter on the ascendant and study that. Because if you're looking at your chart through the lens of Jupiter, then you are looking at your horoscope's capacity for growth, expansion, spirituality, higher knowledge, wisdom, travel, all of the Jupiterian things. So each one of these placements, by placing placing these planets on the first coast, will give you a different perspective on that planet in your life. This is interesting because my chart throws a lot of my, what I call my, affectionately, my Marsan tune, Mars, Sun, and Neptune, (laughs) (laughs) and the Moon, into the 12th house, because they're all sitting right on the same degree. But just right there, that thin razor kicks the stack up into the 12th house. And I'm thinking about your work on reincarnation, because you say that the 12th sets up this life. Mm-hmm. It's one of them. The 12th house and the 9th house, but you're absolutely it's fascinating that it throws those planets into your 12th house. Just knowing you as I, as I do, that's very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean that I mean that in a good way. You know, I truly, it's a wonderful metaphysical. I mean, if you're a, a crook and a criminal and a drug addict, then that's the 12th house. But you're not. If you're not those things, the tendency is for the 12th house then to give you this kind of rich inner resource, the metaphysical, spiritual, reincarnational, and on and on and on. Uh, so I, lo- I love that that's uh, true for you when you. <laughs> when well, and you it's do in that. Scorpio, and there's that transformation theme again. Mm-hmm. And what it does, Thomas, it adds a 12th house Piscean layer to the Scorpio planets. Both of those are water, so that it harmonizes, but sometimes it won't, you know, depending on the chart. But that's it's another insight into you. And you can add transits to it. That's the point. Okay. And then I was going to ask. What are the distinctions between this solar chart and the natural chart? Well, the natural chart is, of course, everybody. It starts with zero degrees Aries and has has all the succeeding signs, successive signs around the wheel. So it's a completely different uh, perspective. It's, It's the natural wheel starting with Aries, the sign of birth, new birth, new beginnings, new starts, emergence, all of those Aryan themes. So when you do that and set up a wheel with zero Aries rising and then place your natal planets in that wheel, you get yet another emphasis. So, for example, I'm a Libra. My sun would fall in the seventh house in a natural wheel. Well, that's a completely different interpretation than my timed natal chart, which has Saturn on the seventh cusp. It's a totally different reading. And I'm totally conflicted, or was anyway, about marriage or not. I wanted it, and then I didn't want it. And I wanted it, and I didn't want it. So, And that's where you get a key or an insight into those kinds of ambiguities or conflicts in your own chart, simply by looking at this different perspective. With the sun in my seventh house, in the natural wheel, I am born, it's in Libra, I'm born to be married. That's And it really was. That was a goal of mine up until I started getting into the age where you could get married and uh, and living with somebody and then thinking about getting married and beginning to realize subconsciously I didn't want to be married, but I didn't know that. So I don't know if that helps. But yeah, it's these perspectives are different, but they contribute to your understanding of a more holistic you than you would get just by reading the natal chart. Okay, now I want to circle back because I just dropped in on my own software, which is Astro Gold. You use Kepler. Just as you mentioned, here is a list of different chart views. Sun on first, moon on first, Mercury on first, and I won't be drag us all the way to the end of Pluto, and then it goes to the nodes and others. But if you were wanting to look at Pluto on the first, for example... What would you be interested in discovering from putting Pluto on the first? 
This you can do with any planets. This is why this technique is so great, Thomas. If you if you place Pluto on the first cusp, you are now looking at you're focusing on Pluto in your natal chart. And what does Pluto symbolize? Well, the old cliche is transformation, but it's a real cliche. Pluto happens to be a collective planet. It rules what the French law system calls force majeure, which is major for or fate. And there is such a thing as fate. Collectively, there's such a thing as fate. Look at what's going on in this country today. We're all affected by this. No, no individual has any real power over what's happening in the United States, for example, or elsewhere in the world. But you do have power in your own sphere, your own life. So that, for example, even in World War II, you have people who, who survived or who got out. Nevertheless, their lives were affected by fate, by Pluto, which is war, death, and destruction on the negative side. It's also, of course, rebirth. And look at the Jews that got out of Nazi Germany in time in the early 30s and mid 30s that many of them migrated to the United States. Many of those migrated to Hollywood, where they wound up having very successful careers. So that was their response to a fated Holocaust. Others did not leave Germany. It can't happen here, they said. And they stayed and died in concentration camps. That's Pluto. So Pluto's extremes. So you get these kinds of life or death extremes. But when you place your own Pluto on the, the first cusp, you're looking at your own power to transform yourself from this to that. So if you're born in a situation or a family or an environment that is hostile to you, Pluto tells you, what are you going to do? Sacrifice yourself, go under, conform, or are you going to rebirth yourself, transform yourself? And usually that means a fairly drastic Plutonian final choice. Am I going to stay in Germany and see this out? Or... Am I going to get my family and go somewhere else? Big, big, big life decision involving Pluto all around you. The Nazis, concentration camps, all that stuff. So do you see what I'm talking about when you place that Pluto on your first cusp to look at it? That is looking at your power to transform your own life. And then you can read each out. Where's the moon? If you place Pluto on the first, where's your moon, for example? Or where's your sun, based on Pluto being on the first? So it gives you literally hours of study and insight into yourself. Boy, it really does. You better have a long weekend and lots of hot chocolate. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's always fascinating to me oh, this how is... shallowly most astrologers treat this incredibly valuable ancient art and science, whatever you want to call it. Most astrologers don't realize how much information is really contained in a horoscope, nor do they realize how much time and thought it requires to draw the maximum out of it. Most astrologers are pretty superficial. Hey, let me ask you on that note. You mentioned that you can add transits to this. Yes, sir. What about progressions? Solar you can. Arts. You can. I generally don't. Okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't use progressions anyway. I use solar arcs. And, I, and you can certainly advance these planets by solar arcs and study those in any of these wheels as well. I generally don't do that. But I will certainly spend time looking at the transits to a solar chart or the transits to my natural wheel chart. Those are, are absolutely valid. In the natural wheel right now, what do we have? Mars and Virgo. So it's in my sixth house in the natural wheel. It's in my ninth house in my time birth chart. And in the solar chart, it's in my 12th. Well, I've got three things right there to consider, do you see? And they're all valid. But if you don't take the time to look at the solar chart or to look at the natural wheel chart, you miss it. You miss all that information that you could be getting. And it sounds like it's going to be confusing. In fact, I find it anything but confusing the, the information clarifies and enriches what the natal or the time natal chart shows you 
truly fascinating. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> That's just great. Thank you for this excellent walk through, and thank you, Sonia, for a good question. And we have a special gift for you from Kristen Lawhead, who runs our Discord group. If you go to funastrology.com, she has created a beautiful free download lunar calendar. It goes from new moon to new moon. It's in the freebies section of funastrology.com if you'd like to grab one for yourself. All the rest of our information is in there, including Robert's direct link for readings if you'd like to avail yourself of that, all in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. <music>